Hi again, everybody. I um, have a video for you today about how to make your own really nifty stamped um, tissue paper. Yep, that's the word, tissue paper. It's kind of like the Tim Holtz tissue. I mean, it's going to be, we're using regular like gift wrapping tissue. Okay, so it's, gonna, it's not going to be as flat and smooth as like you get off the roll from Tim Holtz, but you're gonna, I'm gonna show you how to get this so it all kind of fills in like that. Um, I'll show you a couple of others that I did. There's this one with all the bottles. I really love that. I have um, a couple of sets, uh, I have a set of bottles and a couple of other loose ones and it was really, I really like this one. It's one of my favorites. Um, then there's this one. Did I already show you that one? I probably that's the one I already probably showed you. But you can see it twice because it's so cool. And then I got this really freaking awesome set of bottles and beakers. <laughs> Eyeball stamps and a frog. And oh, I love it. I love it. I love it. So I used that to make this one. So this is a really funky paper. I mean, you know, you're not going to use this on your vintage stuff, but um, I love eyeballs, 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 eyeballs. I love eyeballs. So I got this set for myself. Um, I think from Joanne's when I was at the beach and I love it so that's another one it doesn't all have to be the you know really pretty um, vintagey looking I am gonna show you some vintage looking ones today um, I'll show you what I do and set it up and then um, I'll fast forward so you can see how I fill everything in because you want to start with your bigger stamp so I'm gonna lay out my piece of paper and this one is big enough that it would take me forever to do this. Um, well, I am talking to you, so I'm just gonna go right down the middle here. And I don't ever use a piece that big anyways. My art journals are small enough that the size of a piece will work. So I'll set this one aside for right now. And that piece aside for right now. And I'll spread this out so you can see it. I took off my wonderful Heidi Swap mat that I showed in my um, other video. And I love it, but I wanted to have you know room to move everything around. And you were sitting on, one of your legs was sitting on my mat. And every time I moved it a little bit, then you guys would get sick to your stomach. So um, I have this set. It's a Stam Stampers Anonymous called Travel Labels from a Tim Holtz collection. I have a set of butterflies. I did not write on there where those are from. I have just a simple script stamp with a little postmark. I have a collection of hodgenins of bugs and butterflies. I'm just gonna use the butterflies. Some scrolly stamps. Another text one. This one prints backwards. It, when the script comes out, it goes this way instead of that way, like how we write. It's meant to kiss against another stamp that has a bigger surface, and then when you print it, it comes out right. So you can like color your stamp, print this on there with black ink, stamp it. You get a colored image with black writing on it. Pretty cool. But I don't care if it's backwards for this project. I have another script one that um, is just um, text. Oh, well, you can kind of see it there. I've worn it, worn the label clear off. And I have this set that has flowers in um, some text background and stuff. And I have a gazillion of these. I have these butterfly and bug ones. Mm, this is a Tim, Tim Holtz one. It's a little like ad from the newspaper. Uh, I have a cool frame. There's, oh, the art chart set from Tim Holtz. I have a bunch of key stamps over here. I have a hand cut damask kind of curly corner thing. An ad. Some borders. Some chandeliers. And this is a big ad one that's square. So I mean it will take up some you know good amount of space. And I kind of have these spread all over the table so that I can see them and grab them and decide which ones I want to use. And normally I wouldn't get out this many, but since I'm going to do a couple of sheets and I'm going to show you um, how I do this, I just kind of left myself open with lots of options so that um, I can just grab something and stamp it on there. And I left myself, I'm sure, way too many options. <laughs> Don't we all love that though, right? And um, for this, I am going to use Stays On 
ink pad. I'm just going to use black because it shows up well on here. You want to use something permanent because if you're going to decoupage this onto your page, you don't want all your stamps blurring and smearing and all over the place. Although you could do it with like distress ink and just let it do it. But um, I'm going to use stays on. It gets a good crisp print. Unfortunately, I think I might have to stop and re-ink this really quick. Um, it gives a nice crisp print and um, it will not go anywhere when you get it wet. So that makes it a good choice for this. So I'm going to stop and ink my pad because I'm going to be doing a lot of stamping and I want it to be, you know, nice and black and crisp. And then I'll be right back. All right, stays on, re-inked. Yay. So what I'm going to do is start with the biggest things that I want to have on my page. So the one that covers the most area. So if I'm going to have this on here, I want to stamp this once or twice first. And if I had a bigger sheet, I would stamp it maybe three times. But I think on this one, I'm going to stamp it just once. And then I would take the next smaller things that I want to put on there. Like I think I'm going to put on this butterfly. And I think I might put this ad on there once. And... Or maybe this one. I might I might put one of those on there a couple times. I'm going to use this because we all know we like that script. And um, I'm probably going to use a couple of these other butterflies. I want to kind of keep it a little bit simple since it's a smaller sheet. Um, so we'll see how it goes. I am going to go ahead and um, put this on fast forward while I do this. Um, since I kind of explained it a little bit. So start with your biggest stamps. You know. Use those first, and then you can fill in with the small ones, and you'll see what I mean when I say fill in with the small ones, because you're going to make big spots, and then you're going to just go your next smaller stamp, and then you're going to have lots of little small spots open, and that's where you use your little butterflies, your little tiny butterflies, those. Um, you can use any, any smaller stamps, and you just kind of fill in the holes, so you don't have to work out everything beforehand. Um, you just need to make sure that when you stamp your big stamps, you either have enough room for a small stamp or you put it all the way close together because if you have, you know, a quarter of an inch strip somewhere, you know, there's not much way to fill that in nicely. So um, I will start uh, laying this out. I'm going to grab a block and we'll get down to it. So I will fast forward it from here.
Okay, I have finished um, stamping this. I made a mess all over my board, but it will come up. Um, actually, what's behind this big white part that's behind, it's on my desk. It's actually this screen to a big screen TV. My husband um, got for free somewhere we was working on, didn't get it to work right, so I snagged the plastic. It is not non-stick. I mean, stuff sticks to it. If you put paint on it, you can't get it back off. It's just to protect my desk. That's why I use um, a crap sheet over that. So, um, anyways... Um, you can kind of see where I worked from this, you know, the bigger ones down to the smaller ones. You can fill it in as densely or as loosely as you want. Choose all the different kinds of stamps you want. I mean, pick out all your favorite stuff, you know. It doesn't have to be a theme even. You know, you can use whatever stuff on there you want to. I mean, the choices are endless, you know. I mean, you just, however many stamps you have, you can do something cool with it. Um, so that is that one. Um... I may show you one more. What ones do I want to do on that one, though? I don't know. Maybe not. Maybe just this one. But there you have it. You could even stamp, you know, you have these big blocks of text. You could stamp uh, something in the middle of it if you wanted to. It would, you know, cover. Um, you could actually put a stamp here. Let's see. Oh, I don't have anything to cut it out of the thing right now. But if you... Um, if you had like a big butterfly, where's that butterfly? Okay, if you wanted to have the butterfly in the middle of there, but you didn't want the text behind it, you can stamp this butterfly onto a piece of scrap paper, cut around it, doesn't have to be perfect, just close, cut around it, um, then stamp your butterfly stamp right here, plunk, use the piece that you cut out as a mask, put it over where your butterfly is, and kind of hold it real still, or you know, use a tiny bit of... Um, repositionable well you don't even want anything that strong but something to stick it down you can use like sticky note if you make it on a sticky note it'll work um, then take your big text stamp ink it up put it down right over that mask give it a good good press and um, then peel up your mask that you made with this and you would have a butterfly in here without the words behind it so that's a really fun idea I mean I guess I could just show you that um, a lot of you probably already understand what making a mask is but should you be one of those few that does not understand, a newbie, right? Because we're, we're all newbies at one point. Even people who've been doing crafting or arting or professional artists, you know, there's always something new you try. At some point, it's new to you. And it doesn't, it's not always the same things that are new to other people. Let me get a piece of paper out of my printer. My printer that has no ink, and I don't even know why it's on. It's turned on. There. Or not. There it goes. Okay. It doesn't need to be on wasting electricity. Okay, so here is my butterfly stamp. Oh, my lid won't come off. Oh, that puppy's on good. Usually it comes off just with one hand and use my fingers to pop it off. I probably got something gooey in there because you know it, that happens. Okay, I am not going to sit and make you watch me fussy cut. So I'm going to grab my scissors and then I will cut from here and go to the next step. Okay, I cut my mask. Here's my butterfly. I'm going to ink up my butterfly. Stamp it on my little piece of tissue paper here. This is just like, I mean, dollar store tissue paper. I mean, or whatever you got in a gift. I just flatten it out really nice. And then I fold it into quarters and I just store it flat. And you know what? It doesn't matter because you're going to glue that stuff down onto your paper anyway. So what difference does it really make? In the long run, right? It's just tissue paper. You can have it as fancy or as plain. Holy cow, what did I get on that? I don't even know, but it does not want to open, guys. I usually, when I open it, I usually just flick like that with my fingers and it comes right open. Okay, here we go. Ready? 
Now just push down really good and you want to make sure you push down pretty good because you're going to want that to print right up to the edge of the mask that you cut because remember you have a thickness of paper and then you have the stamp over that and you want to make sure you get down in there good. And there you go. You have your butterfly inside your text stamp. So if you want to spend the time, you can go there. Now you just save this. You can start with your stamp so that next time you go to use it, you have a mask already made. You can cut it out as close or as far as you want, but you have to take a look at this. I'll see if I can hold it up where you guys can see it. Can you see right here? She's a fairy. See her little legs and her little wings right there? She's a fairy for the center of the butterfly. I've had this butterfly for years. I never noticed that before. So hey, new discovery with me. Woohoo! Oh, I should show you how. I should show you how to use these too. Let me find a. Hang on, let me find a solid stamp and I'll show you how that works. Okay, I found me a stamp. This first one I can find that was fairly bold has lots of flat space in it. Um, I'm going to do this with a pigment pad. Pigment inks take a little longer to dry, so um, this works really good. What I'm going to do is ink up the rows. I'm going to ink up this. I'm going to touch that onto the rows. Then I'm going to stamp it. And that will make this stamp read with script across it. If you tried that with a regular script stamp that's supposed to stamp right, you put it on here, you flip it over, it's going to read backwards. So um, this came as one in a set from Tim Holtz. And I didn't see them available very long. They may not be, have been very popular because they stamp backwards unless you use it this way. Um, but I thought they were kind of cool. I actually got it by accident. I thought they stamped the right way. And when I got them home, I realized they stamped backwards. I'm like, what the heck? So I get online. I go to Tim, Tim Holtz's page and I look up for those stamps and hello, they were made to go that way. Yep, there was a really good idea behind it. Okay, now I'm going to, I'm inking up my black stamp. These aren't the greatest colors, but I wanted there to be enough contrast. You know, I mean, I would choose different colors if I was going to do it, but you guys need to be able to see it. So then I'm going to set this one down right on top of the rose. Give it a little, ah, oh, no, I made it skip shoot we'll try again because you really can't see it very good but if you do have to go again make sure you clean all the ink off because when you go to put this one back on if there's black on there hello you have icky pad icky 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 ink pad then so I am not a real fond of pigment pads personally but this one's got turquoise so I'll clean that off Pigment pads are nice for getting a good, clean impression on stuff, but I don't know, it's just not my favorite. Okay, so let's put this back down on here and give it a little press. Kind of like if you're stamping on paper, you want to make sure it gets contact good without smudging, right? Okay, then you stamp this, push it down. You can have this on a block. I didn't put it on a block, but it might make it easier. And then there you have it. So let me show you up close. And you can't really read the script in this one. But there you can see the script is running the right way. And you got it within just in the stamp. I think they're pretty cool. I really like that set. Um, there's one that has like numbers. Where is it? Is the rest of it out here somewhere? Piled under? No, I only got that one out. Let me see. Here they are. Okay, so there's one that has imagination, and it has a definition, has some other stuff. And then this one is just numbers and letters, like a ledger or something, and they all print backwards like that, and it's pretty stinking cool. Okay, this has been a long enough video, so I will say goodbye for now. And I will see you again in another video. And hopefully this time it won't be months and months in between. I'm not guaranteeing anything though. Yep. My health stuff is just ever so fun. Okay. Goodbye. <laughs> I'll see you later. Oh, another awkward ending.